Welcome again to High Rocks Top Tips. Today we are going to be discussing the rower. So where is the rower placed in High Rocks? Let's go through that now. You have your one kilometer run, your one kilometer ski, your one kilometer run, 50 meters of sled push, one kilometer run, 50 meters of sled pull, one kilometer run, 80 meters of burpee broad jumps. Then you'll go into your another one kilometer run and your fifth station is a 1000 meter row. Now with this, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, your 1000 meter row is the same for everyone, just like the ski erg. And it's one of those exercises where it's probably best not to compare your time to others, especially females comparing to males, because generally most males can row a faster one kilometer pace than females, because we are known to be a little bit taller and a little bit stronger. But don't get me wrong, some females are absolute animals and can row Anyways, with this being the fifth exercise in high rock, so technically your halfway point, in my opinion, I think it's a really good time to have a little breather. It's an exercise where you're not really going to gain much ground if you go really quick. You might save yourself 10, 15, 20 seconds, but the energy you have to use to get that is probably not worth it. In my opinion, it's an exercise where you should pace yourself, go at a nice reasonable pace and just get the job done comfortably. So what does rowing actually look like with good technique? As you'll have seen from the video, I will come in from a row, I'll change my damper if I need to, I'll slot my feet straight in and then I'll get pulling until I eventually reach that 1000 meter mark. When I am pretty much close to that 1000 meter mark, so 950, if there's no judge around you, just put your hand up and just get them to come over and verify your finish. Let's talk about movement standards. So this one doesn't actually have any if many movement standards the one rule on here is that when you get on the machine that is the only time you will get to change your damper and if you don't know what that is i will be discussing that when you start rowing you can't change your damper again so when when whenever you go there just make sure you check it because some people will get there and it'll be on a damper 10 and that basically means the resistance really 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 hard and if you've been practicing on the damper three or four, it's gonna feel like an absolute nightmare on the day. So just make sure you check your damper. And the other movement standard is, as I've just mentioned, all you've got to do is hit a thousand meters and then you are done. Let's go through some techniques. Now, just as an FYI, some of the techniques in this video are over-exaggerated, if you can't tell, just to make sure that you guys actually get what I'm on about. The first thing is keeping the rower in a straight line or as straight as you can. I see a lot of people with their chains bouncing up and down, as you'll see on screen. And what this does, it makes the mechanism not run as smooth. So if you think that chain goes in, it goes around to power a fan and then it comes back out. And if that chain is bouncing up and down like it would on, the, on a bike, for instance, that machine is not going to move smoothly. So you want to try and row with that chain moving in one plane of motion, I'd say, I'd, I'd try to think about that. Secondly, there's a very thin line between leaning back on the rower and thinking you're Neo from the Matrix. Yeah, again, technique, you want to slightly lean back to get more leverage, so the rower comes a little bit further, but you don't need to be breaking your back in the process. And the same goes with leaning forward. You don't need to lean forward so much that you look like Quasimodo. Just think you wanna get a good reach from that rower either side of the movement without actually having to overextend in any way shape possible something else i see quite frequently 
is that people are relying on their arms to use the rower. Now, believe it or not, but the rower is actually like 70% legs. So you'll see that I'm actually really pushing and locking out my legs with every single pull on that rower. And then all the arms do is finish that movement. So all your power is going to come through the push in the ground or into the into where your feet are. And again, using your legs is going to help generate those meters to go up that little bit quicker. Now, as I said before, blowing out on the rower is not a good idea. So make sure that when you get on, you can go at a reasonable pace. And when you get off, you're not too gassed. And to know what pace is best for you, it's a really good idea to test your one kilometer row pace. So if you manage to finish a one kilometer row in six minutes, you get off and you are dying, then guess what? Your rowing pace would not be six minutes. It would be seven minutes, for instance. And the way the rowers work, they are concept twos. The ones I use are not. The concept twos will come up with per 500 meters. So a rowing pace per 500 meters. If it is that seven meter window, you'd go 330 pace per 500 meters, for instance. And then when you're rowing in high rocks, you can keep a good idea of whether you're blowing out too much or you could just go on how you feel. And again, over time, when you practice this movement, you will get better and that rowing pace will start to decrease. And so will that overall 1K time. So it's up to you to know that by practicing and learning and coming in with a strategy of a pace that you want to sit at when you're doing that. Now, the damper usually works like a chain on a bike so the higher the damper the more resistance the lower the damper the less resistance now it's personal preference to where you actually sit that damper most people tend to sit that damper between kind of like a, a five and a seven or a five and an eight um, me personally i like to sit it on seven it's got a good amount of resistance that i can actually feel the movement so it doesn't feel too light and that i know i'm actually doing a little bit of work along the process so again whatever high rocks you're doing you've got x amount of time to practice on each of these damper settings to see for you which one feels best if rowing at a 10 for some strange reason feels really good for you and you can handle it like you're a big strong dude or a big strong woman then by all means row at damper 10 but again just make sure in high rocks that when you do get on that rower you check that damper first and you change it to what you've been practicing on. Secondly, the foot straps when you are training, yes, feel free to mess around with where you want the foot straps to sit. Ideally, we want them to be around the biggest part of the foot. But in high rocks, don't spend 30 seconds when you got on the row out adjusting the foot straps, getting in and out. Just on the day, that's something that you should probably deal with. To recap, keep that chain in a straight line. You do want to lean back and forward a little bit with the rower, but not too excessively. Every single pull you do is 70% of your legs, so make sure you lock them legs out and then finish the movement with a pull. And of course, with that damper, just play around and make sure that you have it on a number where you're going to be able to stay in at decent pace, feel comfortable, and again, you know your 500 meter pace, you know your one kilometer time, make sure that you sit at that pace and don't blow out. That's it from me. Peace.